Good morning to you. Mark Seth of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is July 8th, Thursday, July 8th, 2021, and I am in Crystal River, Florida, getting ready to head out after I finish this video to pick up the last of the camera systems and our weather station over in Cedar Key and Horseshoe Beach. If you know this area, you know it's hard to get to those two locations. Um, they're beautiful spots, but it's hard to get to them. you got to go down to one come back out to the highway and then go down to the other spot. There's no straight line between the two, so it's going to take us a little while. Uh, but nevertheless, before we do that and wrap up the ELSA field work, it's time to take a look at what's happening in the tropics. So first, down here in Texas, we've got this trough of low pressure, not organized enough to become a tropical depression, but it doesn't matter. It brought a tremendous amount of rain yesterday and flash flooding, even a flash flood emergency. And I saw some of the video that came out of the, the region, and I appreciate those of you that tagged me on Twitter to show me that. Uh, unfortunately, this is going to persist over the next day or two. I'll show you on satellite and radar in just a minute. Um, but it doesn't take a tropical depression or a named storm sometimes to create these big problems. You remember in 2016, I think it was, there was a non-tropical area of low pressure that moved across the Gulf Coast and really affected places in Louisiana pretty severely. Lake Charles, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, maybe not as far west as Lake Charles that year, but you guys remember that in 2016, I am sure. All right, so we have Elsa here over the Carolinas, the center located over South Carolina this morning, but let's take a look at the satellite and you can see that it's affecting more than just where the center is right in here. Most of the weather is east and north of that center some fairly deep convection or thunderstorm activity. The threat of tornadoes is there. We saw a tornado, unfortunately, over here in the Jacksonville, Florida area yesterday, and uh, a tree fell on uh, somebody down there in Jacksonville. We've had loss of life, unfortunately. So lots of impacts here. It just goes to show you, you don't need a big, giant, news-making hurricane with 150-mile-per-hour winds to shake things up. These tropical storms, lopsided as they may be, can create problems. And if it just, I know the, it's cliche, but if it affects just one person, one person is killed, that is one person too many. And all of this mess I'm going to move up across the mid-Atlantic and then out into the uh, northwest Atlantic Ocean. I'll show you that on the track map in just a moment. Meanwhile, there's the trough of low pressure, this troublemaker, down in the Gulf of Mexico and into Texas. Again, not organized enough to be a tropical depression. You don't have the structure in the overall um, just low-level center. And, you know, it's hard to explain, but these non-tropical areas can produce just as much rainfall, but they're not quite as organized and structurally set up as a tropical cyclone would be. But for the impacts, doesn't matter. It's the heavy rain that's uh, plaguing the area. And that's going to continue for the next couple of days as there's just not much to boot this out. In the rest of the uh, tropical Atlantic, nice and quiet out here in the main development region, tropical wave moving off Africa and into the Atlantic without much to worry about from that. We're getting into a suppressed phase of the Madden-Julian oscillation, and I can show you that in greater detail from a tweet from Ben Knoll here in just a minute. Real quick, a look at the track map, as I said, Elsa going to move up across uh, the rest of eastern North America, really, and eventually out into the far reaches of the North Atlantic up here. Hopefully it won't still be a tropical storm up there south of, um, what is that, Greenland or Iceland up there? Let's, pat, let's bring the map extend out. That's the southern part of Greenland. I should have known that. Iceland's up to the northeast there, but wow. I mean, this thing originated. Uh, over Africa as an easterly wave, came all the way across, did its thing, and now look at this. That's quite a journey. That's why these things are so fascinating. Too bad they bring so much grief with them as well. Speaking of the grief, here it is. You can see Elsa spinning quite literally over the Carolinas here. Some of these heavier rains across the sand hills and the Piedmont, eastern Piedmont anyway, down into the coastal plain. You know, you got to be careful. I-95 up through there and the larger cities, Raleigh, Durham, Chapel Hill, down to the uh, Highway 17 corridor. And maybe a few of these stronger cells produce brief tornadoes, gusty winds. 
you got to just be on the lookout. You know, if you've got radar scope or whatever radar app you use, stay on top of that. Keep your phone handy if there's a NOAA alert that comes out, uh, one of those EAS messages or whatever they're called now. Um, you remember that, the old beeping sounds? That it, just make sure you can get that on your phone uh, for the rest of the day here across the Carolinas. Then there's the system down in Texas. Spinning around, it is counterclockwise with rotation, but again, not organized enough and not the same structural organization as a tropical depression would be. And so there's not much wind with it, but a lot of heavy rain to be sure. So what happens after Elsa? Well, it looks like according from uh, to this tweet from Ben Knoll, not much activity over the next couple of weeks or so. However, once we get towards the latter part of July and into August, here we are now, and then this is the 16th, the 23rd, and the 30th into the first part of August. Uh, let's see if I can get this animation to stop. Sometimes it works for me in the old Firefox. So here we are now. Look at that. It worked. Thank you. And let's use this blue color. So this is where we are going forward, the 9th through the 16th of July, and all this red over here indicates sinking motion, suppressed activity for tropical convection for the most part, with a lot of rising motion over the Indian Ocean and interior Africa. But it's not until we get later on in the month, put this back into motion, there's the 16th through the 23rd, and then finally stopping it at the end of the month, July 30th through August 7th. Look at this, it really starts to spill out this upward motion into the Atlantic so you can generate these systems that come across and you say, well, look at all that sinking motion. Yeah, but that's more large scale. Once these come out and develop, they can find pockets of favorability and those only have to be relatively small. And when you get closer to the coast up here, uh, it's a lot more favorable than what you have down in the deep tropics anyway with these Madden Julian oscillations. But basically the bottom line, the next couple of weeks, I think we're going to get a break and we don't have much to worry about. You know, it's, it's not impossible, but we don't see the large scale favorability pattern for the Atlantic Basin compared to what's coming at the end of July and then pretty much all of August, September and October. I think it's going to be just nonstop. And speaking of that, later today we're going to get an update, actually probably within the hour, from Phil Klotzbach, Dr. Klotzbach from Colorado State University, and uh, his thoughts and his team that work on these seasonal updates. They're going to put out their July forecast, and I suspect it's going to continue to indicate a very busy season ahead. I'm sure you will see that um, tweeted and shared across social media as uh, Dr. Klotzbach and his team talk about what's coming for the rest of the season. Looks like another La Nina could be in store, a double dip La Nina and the warming Atlantic, so forth and so on. Yes, it's going to be very busy, I do believe. Uh, once we get past this two weeks of relative quiet. All right, well, that is it from me. I'm going to wrap this up and get out of the hotel here in Crystal River and make my way out to retrieve the last of the equipment and eventually get back home to Wilmington, North Carolina, late tonight. You guys have a great rest of your Thursday. As always, thanks for tuning in. And, hey, thanks for watching and participating through the social media channels during the ELSA field mission. It's also great to have several dozen new folks that signed up on Patreon to support our project. Uh, that is really fantastic. It's great to have you aboard. I'll talk more about what we're going to do with that project next week. We've got some exciting developments coming our way thanks to that support. So it's really awesome to see all of you out there again. Through the power of social media, especially YouTube, it was awesome. Thanks a lot. All right, have a great rest of your Thursday. I am Mark Suttoth, HurricaneTrack.com. I'll talk to you again tomorrow when I'm back home in Wilmington.